the year is 2009. The economy is struggling. Recession. All that good shit. I'm a young man. Probably like 17 or 18 years old. Working at a bookstore called Books for Cars where they sell shop manuals, owner's manuals, all types of manuals. Over 40,000 manuals in stock. And <clears throat> at the time, my cousin, he was dibbling and dabbling and he was addicted to Oxycontin, 80 milligrams. The 80s. They were going around and the dude he was getting them from, this Asian cat, he was kind of my friend. We'd hang out here and there. You know how the streets are. If you're cool with somebody, you fuck with them. So now you don't really have good friends like that. At least I never did. I just always had a lot of people who I fucked with. Well, actually, yeah, I had a couple people, like one or two or three, who were, like, solid and who I was always usually with, you know? So let me take that back. That was a dumb statement. But anyways, this dude, I ran into him. <laughs> got to talking and I got some information on how much money he was making doing this shit you know and he told me he was getting them for like 30 bucks a pop and selling them for 80 and I'm like $80 a pill that's insanity who would pay $80 for a pill and he's like man you'd be surprised they're jigging they're, they're, I'm getting them off so I'm like, look, man, what can I get them for? He's like, look, bro, if you grab at least 50 of them, I'll give them to you for 32. So I'm like, man, okay. All right. Fuck it. Let's do it. I had some money saved up at the time. I had an extra car. It was a little beater. I went and sold it real quick. Got 2000 off that. I had some money saved. <laughs> So I was comfortable a little bit. I had enough to grab them. I grabbed them. Let my cousin know, like, look, bro, like, you know, you don't got to get them from him. You, know, you grab them from me. I'll give you the deal, too. You know? I'll give you a little deal. I could do it. I'm making money, like, each time. So it's not an issue. And his habit is getting deeper and deeper. And mind you, he's not really my cousin. What it is is my brother married his sister so we're in-laws and he's a shady dude so i'm not really feeling bad at the time because he's tried to get over on me with little moves here and there borrowing money not trying to pay it back even before the pills so it's always kind of be been an issue with me and him he would always be trying to be competing with me and then when he got on the pills he just fell off all the way so he's going around hitting licks, he's stealing lawnmowers, he's in people's houses. He told me a story, he was in this lady's house going through her shit, and she woke up and she was screaming, he ran out the house, a whole bunch of shit, bro, like crazy shit. So that's why I can't even use no names, I can't do nothing like that when I tell these stories because <clears throat> that's not what I'm about. But anyways... It's not going good. He's deep in the addiction. He's got a girlfriend. She's deep in the addiction. They're both deep on these pills, like, hot. You know what I mean? Like, it's not good. So, addiction's taking over. Meanwhile, I'm meeting more people. I'm navigating. I'm in and out of Kent, Auburn, all these areas where people are really addicted. And there's a lot of activity with these oxys man like these girls are out here prostituting themselves and i always try to stay away from that but it was so hard to do because the money was so good man and 
I never prostituted any girls, but I did sell to some girls who were selling their coochie, and I even had a couple pimps try to get on me about some shit and have me give them the pills for a better deal so they could supply their girl because these girls weren't having it. They needed their pills or they were going to be sick. So people were starting to understand that, look, man, the guy who got the beans, beans was the 80s, is the guy who makes the rules, especially in these communities where everybody's starting to get addicted and nobody wants to get on heroin because there's such a stigma there. And the pills are kind of like, oh, yeah, it's just pills, you know? It's the cool thing to do. The little White song was out, Oxycontin. The little white kids is playing it, loving it. And here I am in the mix. So I'm making good money. I'm buying cars, flipping cars. I'm not working at the body shop anymore. It's not worth it. I found another connect who's giving them to me for 25 a piece. And I'm just eating, eating good. And one night, some shit happened. And I was really stressed out. My girl at the time was missing. And nobody knew where she was. I didn't know where she was. She was pregnant, five months pregnant. And I thought she got kidnapped. I thought something happened to her. I thought, you know, maybe some... I, th I was expecting to get a phone call like, look, man, we got her. We want 100 pills or some sh something stupid like that. I would. That's what I was thinking the whole time. So... I go over to the spot where she stays. It was her uncle's house. She was renting a room there. And I was in the process already of moving her in with me, but she was still kind of iffy about it because I would have people come into the house all the time. You know, shit like that. She didn't really like the environment. So I was basically paying her rent there. And I was like, bro, like, where is she at? Like, you need to tell me where she's at. And he's like, Eventually, he cracked, and he was like, yeah, she's with this other dude, this older guy. He came and got her. I think they're staying on campus somewhere, this and that. So I'm like, you call her, because I've been calling her. She ain't been answering. I'm like, you call her. So he calls her. She answers. I grab the phone. I'm like, look, bitch, I know what's up. This is really fucked up. You could have just told me what was going on. I wouldn't have even made an issue of it. You know that. It is what it is. A bitch is going to be a bitch. And not all women are bitches, but if you're going to act like that, I'm going to call you one. And that's just, it. it is what it is. So I told her, like, look, you want to do that, that's fine. You told me the baby was mine. I pretty much know the baby is mine. And she's telling me, oh, no, it might be his. I'm like, yeah, okay, you tell him that, whatever, I don't care, click. But I was so distraught because I was young. And I was ready to have this baby. Like, I really love this girl. And I was just going through it. And mind you, I got all these damn painkillers. And I was like, man, let me try one. Let me just try one, man. And I did. I did. I took a couple hits off of a 80 actually went and picked up my cousin i was like look man i'm about to do this he was like you're about to smoke an 80 you because i was the one who would talk shit i'll be like you crackheads man you fiends out here spending all this money on these pills man y'all crazy and here i am about to do it and he's like damn what happened i was like i don't even want to talk about it man so i get down and hit the pill a few times or whatever I get really high I'm just like still I'm like man this isn't worth it how could y'all pay all this money for this this is not worth it so after that a few days go by I'm still really down this and that I'm kicking it with this girl you know she just got done doing some things to me and she's smoking a pill and i'm like well fuck let me hit it a couple times she's like oh you smoke them now and i'm like yeah so it's like i'm kind of in this little loop now 
Because every time I'm like, I take a hit, people get excited. It's weird. It's like people want you to be dr do drugs, especially when you're around them and you held strong this whole time. They want you to get high. It's like they're like, oh, okay, you want to take a hit? Oh, great. Yeah, like, here you go. Like, they don't even care if it's their pill that you just sold them. They're going to let you hit it. Like, it's weird. It's weird. So, I'm dibbling and dabbling, getting high now, here and there, but I'm not addicted, you know, like, it's very, I'm still making money, I don't care, like, I'll go weeks without doing it, I don't care. Then it gets to a point where I'm just like, I'm so down, and I don't remember what happened, but... I was drinking one night, and I got into an argument or some shit. It was a, got into an argument. I don't remember what exactly what it was about, but I left out and I was driving and I hit this dude. He was on a motorcycle, and I hit him, and I hurt him pretty bad. And I was in jail for a couple nights. I bonded out. It was it was a mess, man. DUI. A whole bunch of shit. Dude ended up being okay. I had to pay him some money. You know, there was a probably like twenty-seven thousand dollars with the lawyer fees and all this shit. So that put a big dent in everything I had going. Now I'm like kind of down. You know what I mean? Like my money's kind of rough and. Like, two weeks after this happens, the 80s start disappearing. Like, now they're going for 100 a pop, 120 a pop. And if you want to buy them in bulk, you're paying 60 to 80 bucks all day. So the profit margin is a lot thinner. Profit margin ain't there no more. And I'm out here struggling stressing don't got the same kind of money got the same kind of habits i'm smoking exclusive weed buying all kind of jewelry clothes jordans everything that you could want expensive food got these girls who depend on me got people who you know love me because i spend all this money but now all that's drying up and it's drying up quick like overnight almost like everything's just drying up and my habits getting worse because I'm stressed I'm habits getting worse so now it's getting to the point where I'm not even making any money I'm just breaking even because I'm smoking so much and shit's getting bad real bad real fast so we start getting into some shit I start hitting licks you know Stealing cars, stealing shit, stealing this, stealing that, getting credit cards, stealing people's credit, buying gift cards, a whole bunch of shit. I don't even want to get into it all. You know, some shit, the shit I got booked for, I don't even really want to talk about because it's a fucked up situation. And I ended up taking a deal. I didn't tell on anybody. But I ended up taking a deal and I don't, I don't know if I'll get in trouble for talking about what happened because it was really some shady cop shit and no, I'm not even going to go into it, bro, because I'm not about to jeopardize my freedom for this, for this YouTube shit. I'm not going to do it. So Anybody who says I wasn't locked up or I didn't do my time or somebody who want to say this or that, I don't care, man. Go, go ahead. That, that's great. That's great, bro. I was never... Think whatever the fuck you want. I could care less. So, I did a little bit of time. It wasn't too much. A year and some change. It wasn't shit. I got out and oxys are nowhere to be found, but now everybody's on perk 30s. Perk 30s are the thing to do. And when I was jigging oxys, I was getting perk 30s for two bucks, three bucks a pop. Because I would buy them in bulk. Now they're going for 20 a pill. $20 a pill. 
and eventually they shot up to 30 but at this time there was like $20 a pill $15 a pill and that's where the price was so I hop into that game even though I know it's didn't learn my lesson hop into that game I'm jigging 30s now doing 30s jigging 30s and of course I started doing them again smoking them then I started snorting them and habit caught up to me quick caught up to me quick I started getting really high all the time started selling cars down and out really down and out 30s are shooting up now now they're 20 30 bucks a pill and I got a bad habit I get to talking to this uh, Hispanic partner and he's kind of in the same predicament as me used to be a hustler and now he's kind of kind of burnt out and he's like look man this is what i've been doing now he pulls out a baggie it's got some black shit in there puts it on the foil takes a couple hits he's like look man this is what you do he lights it for me you know i'll take a hit. he's like it's kind of like a pill you gotta just follow the trail a little bit i'm like yeah it's pretty basic take the foil from him take a few hits even though i really didn't want to i really thought about it i was like man i remember being a kid i was like i'll never do heroin never i don't give a fuck but in my mind i'm like look man you already did the pills that's already prescription heroin like you was already lying to yourself like just come on like maybe you can wean yourself off the pills with this and then just stop completely because just lying to yourself telling yourself the stupidest things so i went ahead and i did that and i got really addicted started doing some bad shit stealing all that stealing every day hitting licks stealing from low stealing big power tool packs running out the door coming up to the register with a bunch of power tools placing them on the register and then just running for the door just so like security wouldn't so they wouldn't be too suspicious so it looks like you're about to buy it, and then you just break for the door driving around in stolen cars hidden licks everywhere so don't even care just leave the plates park right by the door because the car is stolen anyway parking the stolen car like a block from my house using the same stolen car just burnt out burnt out doing really dumb shit really dumb shit eventually got locked up did a little bit of time got out and i was just really disgusted with myself man really disgusted with myself and i went i was kind of still getting high a little bit and i went and i got on methadone i got on methadone because i was before i got on methadone i was i was starting to do bad i was shooting up I was shooting up all the time. I was starting to lose my veins. Like, my veins still haven't really come back in my hands. Like, as you can see, like, I haven't done heroin in probably seven, seven to eight years now. No, probably about seven years tops, maybe. Yeah, about seven years I haven't done any heroin. I don't have any veins there in my hands. Lost all my veins. I was shooting up in my neck. A whole bunch of really, really raw shit. Really raw. And I got on methadone. And I've been on it since. I've been on it since. So anybody who tells me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Or I don't know this or I don't know that. Like, no, I've been working. I've been on methadone for six years now. And I'm on 45 milligrams. I'm going down. I plan to be off of it soon. 
but I do not use any illicit substances besides marijuana. And that, for me, is an accomplishment.